a video to demonstrate a new add-on I've created for Blender. This add-on is all about UVs and being able to create and manipulate them in the viewport. Now, you don't have to use them just in the viewport. You can use them in the UV editor too, but it's not necessary. They'll work straight in the viewport and they can work in both object mode and edit mode too. There's three of them in all. So uh, without further ado, let's get on with the demonstration. The UV brush tool allows you to adjust the UVs on your mesh by clicking and dragging with your cursor. Let's start by clicking on the UV brush tool and right away we get a little circle that defines the radius of our brush. Then by clicking and dragging on the model, we can adjust where the UVs lie. And this is sort of an alternate alternative to dragging them around in the UV viewport. We can also do this in edit mode. So let's tab into edit mode and start the UV brush again. And when you're in edit mode, you have the advantage that not only can you click and drag them on the model, but you can sort of see how they're updating in the UV editor at the same time. Now you can also adjust the size and the strength of the brush. You can either type in a radius uh, in the radius field here, or when the tool is active, you can press the square bracket up and square bracket down keys to change the brush size. Uh, you can also change the uh, amount of uh, strength that the blush brush applies uh, by changing the strength here. We can just type in a number or we can click on pen pressure so that pen pressure is also used to adjust the strength. The UV plane project tool allows you to project UVs along a plane. This can be useful for laying out flat areas like this wall here. Uh, let me select the wall and start the, up the UV plane project to sort of demonstrate this. You can see as soon as I press the button, I get this control here that we can then play around with to lay out the UVs along this surface. Uh, we are given these control handles that adjust the scale and uh, the width and the height. We can also move the uh, texture up and down using these arrow keys and even rotate it using this ring here. And if you hold down the control key, you can snap to 15 degree increments along that ring. Now uh, we can do this in edit mode too. So let me switch to edit mode. And uh, when we start up the plane project tool, uh, you can also see what's going on in the viewport over there, the UV viewport. Uh, one of the nice, other nice things about edit mode is that you can uh, choose to use selected faces only. So when this is enabled, it's going to ignore any unselected faces when you start up your plane projection. So you can adjust the UVs on this face independent of the other faces. Now, um, there are a couple of other modes here. There is face mode, and when this is selected, Rather than using the bounds of your selected faces to uh, initialize the control, it's going to use the UVs on the already existing selected face. So for example, let's select all three faces here. And uh, let's see, let's make this the highlighted face. So because this is the highlighted face, this is the one that's going to initialize it with its UVs. Now when we click on UV Plane Project, the control is automatically set up to mimic the UVs on our selected face. And notice this third face here, uh, because it was selected, had the UVs of this uh, system copied all the way down so that uh, they are now forming a seamless texture. And we can uh, still use the UVs, still use the control the way we did in bounds mode. Uh, this just sort of affects the way that um, uh, well, it just uh, starts up. Uh, the third option for startup is grid. Uh, so when this is selected, instead of using the existing UVs and instead of using the bounding box, what it's going to do is use the grid itself to set up the UV system. So if we click on plane project and we come in, we can see that our control square is precisely the size of a grid square. So if you see the grid squares in the background there, this control is exactly the same size of one of those. 
Finally, uh, we have the step by UVs option. When uh, this is selected, uh, let's uh, go back to base mode. Then this affects how the uh, arrow keys uh, are dragged. Right now, our UV step scaler is at one, which means whenever we drag these uh, translation arrows, the control map uh, control jumps by precisely one texture width. If we were to set this to be something else, let's say uh, 0.25. Now, when we jump, it is by uh, multiples of one quarter. So this is a way that you can deal with textures that might have uh, multiple things on them. For example, some people like to have texture act atlases where uh, you have different sub images within your image. And this can be a useful way to sort of align them that way. Okay, and whenever you're finished uh, with your editing job, just press enter and the changes that you just made will be committed to your mesh. The triplanar unwrap tool sets up the UVs of your mesh based on the layout of the grid itself. It works a lot like the cube projection tool, except instead of using the bounding box of your object to set up the UVs, it uses the grid coordinate system does this by looking at each face and deciding which axis it's pointing along the most closely, then using that axis's uh, grids to generate the UVs. Let me uh, give you an example here. We have our cube selected. Let's give it a material and hit triplanar unwrap. You can see right away the UVs were updated so that each face is uh, aligned to the grid. Let's go into side mode here. You can sort of see we have a two by two set up here, and we have one version of our material in each one of these grid squares. Now, uh, if you were to distort this object, let's go into face mode, we can, oh, let's turn off correct face attributes for now. I'll get back to that later. And if we change the size of our mesh, you can see these faces really start to distort, but if we click triplanar unwrap again, that goes right back to our grid system. Now, uh, let me show you how this works on a more curvy object. Let's get the monkey out and getting closer there. Let's add some geometry and apply that and give it a material. So again, if we want to uh, project this uh, onto the grid, we just click triplanar unwrap, and now all the faces have been updated. So the ones that are pointing along the X have an X mapping, the ones pointing along the Y have a Y mapping, and the ones pointing along a Z have the Z mapping. Now, the reason why you might want to do this is, uh, let's say you're laying out a scene. So, Oh, let's turn uh, correct face attributes back on again. Uh, what this is, is a duplication of the same attribute that you see over here under tool correct face attributes under the options section. It's uh, when this is selected and you move faces rather than, uh, rather than stretching the UVs, it, the uh, blender will try to uh, anticipate what the new UVs would be if you move the points to that place. And it uh, saves you a lot of work when you're trying to resize things and keep more or less the same UVs. Uh, so sometimes it's what you want, sometimes it isn't, so that's why this little checkbox is here. But uh, that just makes uh, life a little bit easier. Anyhow, uh, now you have your first block here. Well, when you're trying to lay out a scene, you're probably going to want to have several blocks and you move them around like this. And sometimes these can get a little bit distorted, especially if uh, you drag them uh, to the side like that. And okay, here's a third block here. So this isn't 
demonstration of how to block in things. This is just a demonstration of the tool. Anyhow, so let's say you set up a scene like this with three little blocks right next to each other. Let's say you want to change the size of these blocks. Well, you can select all of them and change the scale here and set that up to two. And now to have all the objects adapt to the new scale, just click triplanar unwrap again. And there you have the new larger scale. Uh, now, uh, right now this is sort of setting it to absolute units. Uh, in Blender, you have the opportunity to change the size of the grid itself under this menu, this viewport overlay menu. If we were to set the scale there to uh, 0.5, notice that the grid just became uh, a little bit more dense. This is now twice as dense as it was before. Now, if uh, grid scale is not selected and you hit triplanar unwrap, that's not going to do anything because this is still laying things out to be uh, two meters by two meters. However, if you turn that on, then it now takes new grid density into account when it does the layout. So this is just uh, a quick way uh, to just go through your entire scene to make sure your entire block out is aligned. And uh, if something is uh, off axis or distorted, it will make sure it everything gets lined up and according to the grid, which is likely what you want when you're doing a block in. So those are the tools. I'm going to be posting these shortly on my GitHub page and likely in Blender Market and maybe a few other places. Uh, so give them a try. I hope you find them useful. Uh, if nothing else, they're a bit of a twist on more conventional ways of laying out UVs. And uh, in any case, thanks for watching.